Use the graph to determine A, the function's domain. So we'll start by clicking this little uh, icon here. And we're looking for the domain. So the domain is the set of all inputs. So it's all of the x's that give us y values. So over here on the left, there's no y values. So none of these x's will be in the domain. The first one that's in the domain is 0. And that's because there's a y value here, right? Negative 2 is the y value. So the domain is the x's. So we, we go from 0 all the way to infinity, left to right for domain. And we have y values all along the graph. So 0 to infinity will be the domain. And we use a bracket on the 0 because we have a, a solid dot at the 0. If there was a hole here, it would be a parentheses. So 0 to infinity. Let's try it. Good stuff. The function's range. Let's go back to the picture. So the range is all of the y values. So we go from the bottom up. Now this graph keeps going down forever, right? So um, it goes down forever. So we go from negative infinity all the way to negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. So from negative infinity to negative 2, those are all the possible y values. So it's negative infinity to negative 2. And we use a bracket on the negative 2, again, because it's a solid dot. Okay, good stuff. The x-intercepts, well, if you click on the magnifying glass, um, there are no x-intercepts, right? The graph never crosses or touches the x-axis. So there is no x-intercepts in this problem. So I'm going to click there is no x-intercept. And then it says determine the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is where the graph touches or crosses the y-axis. So it looks like negative 2 right there. Negative 2, that would be the y-intercept. So y-intercept negative 2. Click check answer, boom. Then it wants f of 1. So f of 1 is the y value when x is 1. So when x is 1, that's where my cursor is, the y value is 1, 2, 3. So negative 3. So when x is 1, the y value is 1, 2, 3. So negative 3. So negative 3. Check answer, and that's it.